I have another DPS review. We got Yen on Hanzo on Junkertown. Uh, I have not pre-watched any of it, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, good, 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 good. I like the fact that you were able to get the <laughs> Widowmaker easily. A uh, little nitpick, I suppose, with the Sonic area arrow. Uh, I would have personally just put it, instead of trying to hit the Widowmaker herself, I would have just put it right here. So you have the Sonic arrow on the Widowmaker as well as it covers this other little, little place that people like to play. Just a small nitpick. But being able to get that pick is so important, obviously. Now if you can just stop the res, oh, so unfortunate. Okay. I like what you're doing overall. Uh, whenever you were peeking wide here, there was three people looking at you. If they had a little bit better aim, you would have gotten taken out. I'm not a big fan of just crossing the bridge here as boldly as you are. I know you're trying to take like the ego duel on the cast, you know, to hit the shots, kill them, and take them out. But what I would have preferred happen is you could go over here to change your angles. You could even hop down because you have the ability to climb over this fence. Well, everyone else is distracted over there. You can get free access to their back line just by coming over here on this side. Seeing if you see anything, you're probably not going to see anything from up here. But you can just hop over take somebody out and then if and even if things get hairy you can just hop the fence and get out i don't like taking the the bridge just wide open especially against a curry or a cast excuse me yeah you pretty much had to jump down you're still really really wide open right now not really playing to to any kind of cover Yeah, I would really like to see you playing on like high ground where you can take like isolated duels on people. This is very brave. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harp on this too much, but the Bastion is like completely oblivious to the world. You have to make sure you hit your opening shot on him so that your storm arrow is like four. You only have to hit, I believe, four of your five storm arrows if you hit a full charge, uh, just regular shot, and that'll just kill them. You got to make sure that you take a little bit of extra time to confirm the the first shot, so that the follow up shots will actually kill. Yeah, the I go, <laughs> I kind of like what the life weaver did. You were getting a little lost in the sauce. Good kill. Uh, you, the old is good. <laughs> I didn't even expect it to kill anyone. I was just talking about it. I was just thinking you were just going to uh, separate the Bastion from his team. I didn't think they would actually die to it. That makes it even better. <laughs> good kill. Thank you. I guess in general, just like, be aware that you can use your your uh, sonic arrow for scouting whenever you're going through a blind corner like that. I mean, you don't have to, but just if you have no better use for it at the time, it doesn't hurt to it doesn't hurt to just make sure it'll if something's safe or not, you know. Good hiding spot. A little unfortunate that you got pushed like that. I like the spot here. Just because it gives you some roots to play with in case you get pushed. Ah, a familiar thing of failure. Just unfortunate that he won the duel like that, you know? You seem to have a bit of hesitation with your shots. Good hit. Again, right there, after getting that pick, I would be looking to take a rotate. 
not necessarily straight to where everyone is, I probably still would be trying to take these these angles. Like, going from, like, jumping, like, whenever you know that they're retreating, you can jump down and go to the left and get up on this bridge and stuff. Just going through these, like, flank routes, these, like, short flanks, is kind of what makes, is kind of like Hanzo's, like, big strength. He's, like, he's, obviously, he's not a flanking hero. He's not, like, a Genji or a Tracer type. But if you can go on these, like, short flanks to get these assassinations, he's just as effective at getting in and getting out as, like, a normal flanker would be. Just not in the same sense that he can, like, safely continually do that it's more just like you get a pick like that you look for a rotation where you can get a where you can get a sight line on somebody who isn't expecting you to be there and then you take them out too instead of uh not necessarily just running straight at and taking the uh the aware 1v1 where like the people that you're walking towards are completely aware of where you were previously so they're probably expecting you to walk that way you know so like taking short flank routes on Hanzo is like really really powerful, especially like a one shot hero or even in no headshots, just a one and a half shot, two shot, you know. See like right here, they're completely aware of your existence. Great ult. Yeah, so like big thing there. Is like whenever there's a tank in your face, you kind of just want to get to you. Pro you kind of just want to like wall climb and lunge away if you can. Uh, you don't necessarily just want to like hang out and see if you can get a pick like another trade before you die. But you also just want to be aware of their positioning beforehand as well, so they don't just sneak up on you like that and start <laughs> pummeling you to death. So similar concept with the sonic arrow, you don't have to treat the sonic arrow like a regular arrow. Most of the time it's even better just to shoot it quickly. Like you don't have to pull it all the way back or anything. Just shoot it quickly into an area where you're going to get lots of information. And then use that information whenever they go strafing out of cover to just confirm a headshot. You know what I mean? So like instead of holding sonic arrow to just shoot it like a normal arrow, put it anywhere. Like anywhere in this area so you can have... The wall hacks on soldier and then as he comes out to peak you can just you can just piece him you know and then another thing i'm not sure i've seen you use your wall climb once like you don't have to play payload like this like you can you can crawl up the high ground to see about taking advantage like about seeing about taking better sight lines and getting kills and stuff like that. That's unfortunate. He wasn't even aware you were there yet. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to hit people who are just who know you're there, huh? Shooting unaware targets is really the whole reason why the short flanks on Hanzo are so strong. Because it's really difficult as a projectile hero, unless you have a really fast moving projectile, to hit characters who are just completely aware that you're trying to shoot them. The life rip was silly. Oh man, it looks like you're lagging maybe? Weird. So you're predicting him to juke. Good confirm. So kind of a big thing right here. This is actually a really good time where I can show you this. So with that alt... Let me just hop up here real quick before, and let me back up just a little bit before everything got all crazy messy. So, here we go. 
Oh god, there's so many particle effects on the screen. Okay, so... Pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. Right here. So the tank's here, they have a pocket here, the Kiriko's over here. So as Hanzo, if you come over here, and you alt, even like even from the stairway over here, if you alt in a way that like completely that like floods this area and then cuts the Kiriko off from a sightline on on Ramatra, it's like a way more powerful use of your ult. Just like using it to separate the tank from his supports will give you a ton of value, especially if you're in just like a wide open room where people can just shift back and forth to dodge. But yeah, that's just like, that's just one way that you can use your ult, especially in these areas where uh, it's just super wide open otherwise. Because shooting it straight down the lane, they just like shift over here or whatever. But if you can use it to cut off sight lines from the supports to the tank and isolate them, it's basically like a May wall that technically you can walk through, but it'll kill you. That's unfortunate. So, what I would have liked to have seen, specifically... I mean, it's kind of rough, because there's, like, a ton of... There's, like, so much stuff happening. It's just, like, you you would have used the ult to cut off the sight lines, and then you would go up here, and in that chaos, you could probably find some kills on the people who are separated by it, or, like, are still trying to maneuver inside of it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the enemy Kiriko ults, and there's, like, a ton of stuff going on. But maybe something to keep in mind in the future of using your ult to just, like, completely zone people away from the fight. While isolating someone that you actually can kill or want to have take the opportunity to kill. Oh, Rez in the middle of battle. Love to see it. Just keep running, just keep running. Good kill. Oh, so close, so close. Uh, that's unfortunate, so pretty ambitious in general anyway to drop straight down because like the whole enemy team is here on the other side facing facing you like it's really 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 ambitious i mean obviously your tank's there as well but i would have been more focused on assisting your tank especially just because the genji is more or less completely isolated and out of the fight for the moment but you know hindsight and all that i will persevere This is a situation where I'm not going to comment too much on the aim, I but more like what's the cause of the aim. Uh, it's one of those situations where as the Hanzo player, you have to get more comfortable with like aiming under pressure because it's like the when the panic sets in, you know, you end up using your storm, your storm arrows and like miss all five of them. And it's like really crazy and you start panicking more and more if you need to take like extra time i know you're under a ton of duress but if you can do it slowly you can do it fast so it's more just like in the heat of the moment you got to take a little little tiny bit of extra time to like mentally reset and refocus and hit the shots as versus as versus just trying to wildly do it like before, whenever you you hit some flanks and stuff, and then you miss like your opening shot and stuff, it's just like uh, rushing, rushing versus uh, taking your time to in, to like guarantee those shots. So you just gotta be careful about stuff like that. It's just like a mentality thing. Oh, that's so unfortunate. 
I have definitely missed time some uh, some Genji deflects in my life and killed a person or two. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still not sure I've seen you uh, even use your wall climb yet. It is a really strong part of Hanzo's kit. It's just like taking these high grounds and stuff. And then again with the with the flanks and everything, like you don't have to play 5v5 just like straight down main. It's always good to be taking those those flanks and stuff. Like any advantage you can take is an advantage you the enemy team doesn't have, you know? <laughs> That little window is so funny because if you try to climb through it, stuff like that happens. This is also a situation where I know that Genji is like the most tempting target because he's right in your face. But if he's like too hard to hit as the Hanzo, just go after the, the big hitbox man. Just go after the dude that you can definitely hit instead of trying to like, you know... Instead of trying to like uh, find the needle in the haystack of the Genji or anything like that. But really, the whole thing that I'm really harping on here is that you should be trying to take these positions where you're splitting the enemy's attention. If you can get in these positions where the enemy has to choose between looking at the other four members of your team and looking at you, you make it a very, very hard decision for them to make. Like It's not a good choice. But whenever you're, they only have to look one direction... It means they can take in all that information at once. Okay, you kind of you kind of get it, yeah. With the by going for the by going for the uh, mercy instead. Oh, oh, that's brutal. That is tough. Score zero to two. The Sigma floated off and your life weaver wasn't on it. I've never been more than okay, May. I like May. Her right click's very Hanzo y. You can set up some pretty strong situations with Bastion. Typically, Bastion May is played with Reinhardt. Just because of that <laughs> great shot, I guess. <laughs> Just because Reinhardt is able to take advantage of May's wall with pin. But if you can isolate the Ramatra with your wall, you and Bastion will be able to just just shred him, you know? You are very brave. I would have been ice blocked so fast. So right here, you should be looking for a wall on the Ramatra. Ah, oh, yeah. I probably would have been looking for that wall as soon as it came up up off the cooldown, honestly. Careful, oh, wall, 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 wall. Yeah, yeah. I like playing the corner, obviously, but you really just gotta try and find these, uh, <laughs> again, you gotta be careful not to rush. I'm hoping you don't ult, just because you don't need it. It looks like you got it. Yeah, yeah. All good. Perfect, perfect. Looks good, looks good. There, you could have used... I've seen you do it earlier. Uh, you could have used your ice wall to uh, climb, but that guy had no sense of self-preservation and just stayed where you could reach him, so that's really nice of him. So with May specifically, like the left, the primary fire is really good and everything. But if you're like much like Hanzo, if you're like sneaking up on somebody, getting the opening right click on someone who's unaware of you is so strong. The opening right click is a 75 instant damage, or if it's a headshot, it's 150 instant damage. So if you can hit the right click and then follow it up with the primary fire, if you need to confirm the kill and you're you know, the person's, like, aware that you're shooting at them at that point. That's good. But it's much, much better to open with the, the uh, icicle than it is the spray. Because, especially against Moira, 
Because if you start spraying her and she has fade, she's just going to fade, right? But if you hit her with the icicle, that's damage that she has to heal off somehow, right? It's more damage than she would have to heal off from spray. And especially with May anyway, it's just, it's more DPS with Icicle than it is with Primary Fire. A pleasure. That was unfortunate. So before you Ice Blocked, it may have been a good time for you to Blizzard. And then you could have, uh... You could have probably stalled like 10 whole seconds for your team to come back onto the point. This is clearly hindsight. I'm not comfortable with May very much either. Good shot. Good shot. See, that's what I mean about lining them up. Like, you took that extra second there and you schooled that Widowmaker. And don't get me wrong, I am fully aware of the fact that it is hard to keep track of just all these things in the middle of fighting especially whenever especially whenever you know you've been playing a certain way for a long time and stuff like that so like I like what you're doing I would really just at this point try to seal the mercy off if anything I would try to seal the mercy off away from the Zarya and just kill the kill the mercy instead of trying to fight the uh, Zarya Uh, that blizzard I, I wasn't really feeling just because you probably didn't need it for that fight. I mean, I'm glad you're using your ult instead of holding it forever, waiting for the perfect time. But, eh, it's fine, right? Like, it pretty much did what it needed to do. Now you just need to charge another one. But I definitely prefer uh, using May ult before your cooldowns. Just because uh, in your ult in conjunction with your cooldowns can stall just like so, so, so much time. If not, just outright win a team fight. Here again? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This is exactly what I was talking about. You just wall off you just wall off the tank and then go after the supports instead. Like, what are they going to do? That's unfortunate. But you had a direct impact on that fight right there. Like, a really strong one. When you sealed off that Zarya, you bought your team so much time uncontested on the back line. Same kind of idea with this one. It's just better to open with Icicle than anything else. Oh, that's oh, so unfortunate. Yeah, so... That's just like a big awareness thing, obviously. I'm not going to harp on it too much by any means, but... The Genji is ulted. Probably should have been looking for... Like, whenever your ammo gets low, just go ahead and... Just go ahead and Ice Block. Use the... The third person view of Ice Block to get a better view of your surroundings. And then from there, you can reassess if you need to come out of it sooner or just wait out his ult. Also, not sure if you know this on this map. So as a non-mobile character, you can actually climb up there uh, using this little like bulldozer thing. If you jump on the tracks and then you can get up onto the head and then onto the side and actually climb up onto this fan blade. And, like, pretty much no matter what hero you're playing, it is always good to, like, at least start on high ground. You can change things as you need to, but starting on high ground just gives you so much view of the battlefield and just so much more information than what the enemy team is working with. But uh, otherwise, from where you are, you can actually go up here, upstairs, and then get to the fan blades and stuff. But, yeah, just playing... 
uh, high ground is always good because you can drop down if you if you need to, but you can't climb back up like on demand, especially on May, unless it's uh, the perfect size of your ice wall. He ate that. Nice. Great. Great ult. Amazing. I, I'm gonna assume that you like waited for a few for a couple cooldowns and threw it, which is just perfect. So good. So good. Doing fine. That's one where I would have, uh, you could have, you could have saved your teammates there. I mean, it's hard to say that in the heat of the moment. But if you can just, like, put a wall in front of him to at least impede his ability to push your team, you probably could have prevented those couple deaths. Also, it's really, really, really bold right now to be fighting this, like, 3v5 that you are. Like, it's really scary. Oh... Okay. Holy. This is very, very, very chaotic. Yeah, ice, 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 ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. And now at this point, you can. Yep, you got, you got another ult. That's great. So I know that you. Like, obviously, it worked out there, but you know, so for beat drop specifically, you had your wall up. If you could have walled off any number of people other than the Lucio, just if you've been ult tracking. Because of the beat drop, you know, he hadn't used beat drop the whole time and he's been Lucio for a little bit. If you had walled, if you had broken line of sight with your wall against the Lucio, you had a really, really good chance of blocking beat. Because that Lucio is probably not going to want to push into your blizzard, first of all. And second of all, they only get like eight tenths of a second to get line of sight on somebody to give them the beat if they're not already in line of sight. That's just a thing, another thing to look out for. Very niche situation though, right? Like, you're May, you have your wall, you're gonna ult, and the Lucio is in the game, and <laughs> and has beat, like, very niche. So here, I think what you're doing is fine. I think it's another situation where I would want to wall off the Orisa and then go for the support specifically. Just because I believe the Orisa hadn't shown off any cooldowns yet. Or they might already, they might just already be on their second round of cooldowns. This is insane. This is the third Blizzard you've charged in the last like minute and a half that's literally ridiculous <laughs> oh man so yeah big thing on may the right click opening opening with icicles so strong so much stronger like you get way more dps from right click than you actually do from the spray the spray obviously has its place and everything and then like just isolating targets more and then going for the isolated targets as may is obviously something you should try to look for to do more but overall, I mean, very good, very good. Like, high grounds and stuff, flanks on Hanzo, taking a little bit of extra time to, like, confirm your hits and everything. But overall, that was a, that was a very promising uh, replay, to be honest. Very good. So here, I'm just showing you an example of, like, a flank that you can take. So I'm just, like, going over here, over to this left high ground, seeing what's going on. My team's on the right-hand side. I completely ignore the Ryan because there's like no reason to even target him. And then I end up getting a couple picks just because I'm on a crossfire with the rest of my team. And that ends up translating into like their entire team falling apart. These are just opportunities you can look for as like the Hanzo player at pretty much any time. This is another example of like creating a crossfire. Like they're completely distracted by my team in front of me. And I'm able to just go up that street and take them out. This is just a quick example of using your ult to split the tank off from everybody. Uh, this one doesn't end up working out quite as well just because I use the ult too close and 
a little cheeky tire pop as well, just for ego. And then this last one is just a quick, fun example of how you can use your storm arrow to bounce around geometry and take people out. 